It's the second week of our home show, Roadshow, and I have a treat for you now. We were very lucky to get a guided tour behind the scenes of one of the country's most beautiful buildings. Based in Dublin city centre and built in 1890, it is famed for its stunning rotunda and somewhere that we probably all went on a school tour at one stage or another. Uh, But if you're still not sure where I visited, well then take a listen to this. Hi, I'm Aoife Hurley and I'm the Head of Operations with the National Museum of Ireland. Now Aoife, it's absolutely wonderful to be in this building again. And I say again because I haven't been here in such a long time between Covid and closures for a while. Here we are and the first thing that strikes me about this particular building is this incredible entrance lobby. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, this, we call this the Rotunda. The building is designed by Thomas Dean and Sons. The space is beautiful because there's such a variety of architectural styles nearly in the space and mm. a variety of material. So you can see the floor is this amazing mosaic floor. So when the building was first built and opened in 1890, this space actually held uh, copies of classical Greek statues. And they, they signified symbol from astrology and astronomy so that's why the, the zodiac is represented in the mosaics here on the oh, floor. Oh I see and the actually sign, the 12 signs of the zodiacs. So round this centre uh, mosaic circle we do indeed have all of the signs of the zodiac. I'm looking for my own which is Aquarius. Yeah, there Libra. she is so, yeah. <laughs> and there you're Libra. Yeah. All right. What kind of work would be involved in, in creating this? You'll see these mosaic floors throughout the museum and you'll also see them in the National Library. They were designed by a company called Oppenheimer. So a man called Ludwig Oppenheimer, he was a German. He learnt his trade in Venice, but then he actually traded out of Manchester in England. And how this worked, there was almost kind of like a catalogue of designs. The architects, uh, Thomas Manley Dean and Thomas Newman Dean, would have gone to him and it's kind of like a a bespoke design for the building. And their little tesserae is the name of the little individual pieces of the mosaic. And they're laid in kind of panels. So they would have come in, in, in big panels and fitted together onto the floor. And then there'd be joint, you'd see different joints around the place. The joints are taken up by the, the, the bands of colour and they'd be kind of movement joints between two areas. I have to say, I can hardly see them. I mean, it yeah. is perfectly done. And even on the white tiles, which forms the base, there's a pattern within the pattern of semicircular tiles and, and then across the pathways. Yes, it's beautiful. And there's floral motifs and then there's, you know, Greek motifs. Um, it's really beautiful and it's laid on this kind of like a cement screed and the interesting that you'll see in areas where there's little bits have come out over time and what's interesting is that the environment in the building has changed over the years the building's 131 years old so it's 1890 was when it was opened and it's it's become warmer and there's different fluctuations in temperature so we're seeing areas now where the, some of the tiles are popping up and there's I ongoing see. kind of repairs that are needed to well, keep now that the floor happened after, that happened in my kitchen after just 20 years so yes, there you so go yes, I think that that it's certainly it is doing extremely well. Now but talk it, to me a little bit about the columns that we're looking at around yeah. here. These are, to my untrained eye, sh- uh, you know, polished marble. Yeah, marble columns with the ionic capital. So the capital is carved out of stone. The base of the columns is also is a bath stone, but the marble is different. There's different marbles from different counties in Ireland, but there's also some Italian marbles as well. Definitely. And then above that, the, the, the kind of frieze, the redder kind of flat stone that you see going around, that's mm-hmm. a red sandstone. And it's beautiful the way it works, the detail works up and then it kind of simplifies, you know, at the band above the above the balcony there. And then you've got the, the these these columns down here are, are sitting out kind of in, almost in a colonnade. And then you'll see at the top there, there's pilasters that are set into the, oh, I into see. the wall. So there's a mirroring and the, of And there's a mirroring of and the echoes. scale is kind of bringing you up towards the, the oculus at the centre. Now, this upper section, which forms this vast rotunda, looks to me like it's from a very, very different period because it is this, um, I don't know, eggshell blue, maybe it's it's almost Victorian or Edwardian in its colour and the gilt edging and, and all of the white uh, and pale blue plaster. You're used to seeing that maybe in Victorian dramas or The Crown or, or yeah. things like that. So, if you so go into tell the me about courts, that. It's quite similar to that as well, you know, if you go into the four courts mm. in Dublin, you have something similar. But the stu- like, and what you're getting at there is that this, there's very different styles in this building. You know, if you look at the outside of the building it's kind of it's it's not as elaborate maybe as what you see inside and that was to do with the building trying to read uh, correctly with say Leinster House that it wasn't competing with the with because Leinster House was built before 
the, the library and uh, the museum here. But then when you come in, he used diff the, the Dean Brothers used different kind of Renaissance style. They, they, they're, they're a company that are originally Dean and Woodward, mm -hmm. and some of their Dean and Woodward designed the museum building in Trinity College, and that's kind of a Venetian style. So they were looking back all the time. They certainly to different were. Styles and then incorporating them into, the, into this building. And it's thousands of years of styles mishmashed together, and, yeah. and it works. It, do, it does work. And what's amazing as well is that it works with the collection. Now, Aoife, we've come into the main salon on the ground floor, and this is a very different space. Yeah. Uh, so this has a, a large rectangular room. Again, you can see the columns in different places, but these are far more ornate. These are terribly Victorian looking. And there's a metal mezzanine up at the top, a beautifully ornate railing and uh, and this fantastic ceiling. So talk to me about this particular room. Yeah, so this we call this room the centre court. And um, again, again, the architectural style in here is quite different. Like you're saying, there's the, there's the beautiful decorative ironwork, which was made by Young and Sons um, from, the, from the UK. And that would have been brought over for this project. It's very decorative. It would have been in the style of, if you think around, eight, this was 1890, so in 1851 you would have had the Great Exhibition. So this was very much, you know, the, the Crystal Palace kind of style. This was of them. Prince Albert's yes. homage to the Great Exhibition and the beautiful palace that was built in, in London at the direction of Queen Victoria. And, and everything really flowed from that, didn't it? Yeah, exactly. New and, innovation. And coming out of the Industrial Revolution mm. as well, you know, was looking at different types of materials because... Again, we're talking about innovation. It's very interesting, just the use of materials, you know, and the floor, you can't see it here, but the, the substrate, the floor here is a, is a patent, it's a concrete and steel patent type of floor, which was a fireproof floor, floor that had just been patented around the time that the building mm -hmm. was built. So the architects were kind of inv innovated at the time, trying to use different materials, but you'll see the yes, collections. Yes. When it comes to the tiles, I can see it. there are places where it's pockmarked, there are tiles missing. Um, you're not going to call tile style. What are you going to do? Yeah, so in a building like this, this building is a protected structure. It's one of the most beautiful historic buildings in Dublin. It's the, such a, a range of materials. So you have to use skilled craftsmen to work on a building like this and to, to maintain a building like this. But the building, the building is owned by the Office of Public Works and they actually have an in-house maintenance team called Building Maintenance Services. And they do a lot of the, of the work they, you know, they would have painters, plasterers, joiners. So they would do a lot of the day-to-day -day and the kind of regular maintenance work in terms of unblocking gutters and that kind of stuff. And then the very specialist items like the floors, there's not that many companies that can do that. So you really have to seek the specialist conservation firms that can work on the mosaic floors, on the ironwork. We'll see the doors later, the Carlo Cambi, the beautiful oak and walnut doors. Again, you need to get a, a, someone who's a specialist. We're heading towards the treasury, but before we go in, I am looking at the most extraordinary door frame. Now, it, it, it might be to everybody's taste. I love it. Uh, talk to me about it. It looks like a highly polished um, porcelain. Yeah, these these are, door surrounds are amazing. They're 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 in the they're called faience or majolica, which is like yeah. highly glazed ceramic. The surrounds themselves were actually designed by one of the deans. I think Thomas Manley, dean, one of the architects, designed them, and they were sent. The designs were then sent to Wilcock and Company, which are a Leeds uh, company that then made the surrounds. Mm. And then it's amazing because that you, you see the, the beautiful timber door that's sitting within the the door surround. Highly ornate, very Again, well carved. And in, almost in a different style, it's kind of it the is. more more the clashing, you know, but it really works. And then you have... <laughs> and above it then, we have these yeah. little cherubs holding the three Dublin castles. Exactly. Isn't yeah. that so it? The, the, the Irish man designed them. So, and, and it's an interesting story about the about how the, the building came about. There was an architectural competition for the building in 1881 that was actually run by the Board of Works, which is now the Office of Public Works, and no Irish companies were shortlisted. So a lot of the mm. nationalist parties in Ireland were very unhappy, so they had to rerun the competition. And that's how an Irish company came through then was shortlisted, and that's how Imagine Dean and that. Sons from And Cork didn't came they through. do just very, very when well indeed. When the doors were being um, commissioned, again, there was uproar about that because they were made by an Italian um, company, Carlo Cambi. The joinery associations or whatever they were called at the time back then were very unhappy that an Italian firm were doing this but how they convinced them was they said but these will almost be like part of the exhibits 
these doors. There's no doors mm. like this. These would be part of the exhibits and it fits in with the, with the right. idea of the museum and that kind of sold the but idea. Do you know, we have a sense that even nowadays in buildings we would be having the same rows yes. about picking companies for it. Let's Absolutely. have a look at these doors now because they are, they're very heavy. Are they oak? They're oak. Some are oak and some are walnut. I think this one is oak. I see. Um, and and they all have different designs on them. They and do. Some of them, they, they might reflect the use of the room. We have birds and yeah. we have flora and we have pieces of armour and we have lions and all sorts of things here. So yeah. pretty much covers covers everything. They really are very, very beautiful. They're beautiful. And you see doors like that in the part of the National Gallery as well. Now, Eva, we're about to head upstairs uh, to the first floor, but before we do, can I just ask you about this little staircase lobby that we're in? I, I think they must have been years carving out the panels here. Again, we see cherubs with the three Dublin castles. We see great big stonework arches uh, and lots and lots of decorative features. Yes, the carving of the stone was done by a, a man called Charles Harrison. And, and apparently who Dean used a lot in his projects. And this again is a, is a sandstone because sandstone is quite a, a, a porous, it's an easy to carve material. What's funny about the, what you see here is that looks like a stone surround around the door there, but that's mm -hmm. where someone has actually painted over the Majolica door surround <gasps> to look like stone. Outrageous. Yes, so there's a plan <laughs> to get to bring that back, but these are the kind of Do you know? Have you seen underneath it? Do you know what it looks you can, like? You can see just there the little guy. Ah, the little look, there's there. a little bit yeah. oh, just out now. But it's so the that interesting thing. It's, it's a different approach of different people over time. So it's, yeah. it's all the interesting layers. And the it looks exactly you the same. You couldn't, I yeah. couldn't have told that it was, it was painted. And then you've got the beautiful plaster work then and the, and, uh, and the ceiling moulds. My favourite thing about the stairs is this Connemara marble handrail. It is beautiful. Because you have a mixture of all the, uh, lots of different types of stones that we were talking about before, but this one would be my favourite. It Connemara. is absolutely beautiful. And of course, Connemara marble, we featured it on the home show before, that gorgeous moss green striations in it. Absolutely beautiful colour uh, and has clearly stood the test of time. It's, it's as new. And the stairs itself is bath stone. Okay, well, let's head up the stairs now and uh, and we'll see what's up here. Now, there is a kind of a, a more friendly handrail in brass, if anybody if anybody would prefer that. But actually, I adore this staircase. It's so... Un Imagine the weight it must have been to install. Oh, yes, unbelievable. And the, and, and the, and the craftsmen that would have done it and the, they would have brought the blocks from the quarry to the site and then carved them here and then installed them. Now we're heading into a gallery space because yes. we're going to overlook where we've just come from, exactly. which is the ground floor. There's staircases yeah. on both sides, so it's like um, a gallery with a mezzanine floor as well. Yes, exactly. And again, here we have the beautiful iron railings. And, and actually, do you know what I love about these iron railings? I mean, they're desperately ornate. These look like uh, mermen and mermaids all the way around. Uh, but it doesn't distract from the view down below. It doesn't block it. No, it doesn't because of the design that there's lots of openings and, op and, and different sections in it that you can see through. And it goes all the way around, of course, and it is supported again by these columns that reach right up into the roof. Yeah. Uh, and then across, in, in it's mirrored in this metalwork yeah, that you can see arches across the they're roof. They're the iron trusses. This isn't across. unlike what you would find, I, I think, in a Victorian train station. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Or a very, very ornate version of the glass houses that were being designed. Mm. Yeah, um, which brings us back to, to, the, uh, to yes. uh, the Crystal Palace exactly. and all of that for yeah. the exhibition that was and then uh, from in the here, 1850s. When you look down, you can get the whole view of the beautiful mosaic floor. You do. And actually, this is a lovely vantage point. Uh, to see the floor in all its glory because it is highly polished when you're when you're down there you can see the tiny little tiles up from here you can't just the beautiful art yeah. so uh, Eva, how does this rate against the other buildings you've worked in oh that's a good question how does it rate i've worked in some i worked in really interesting buildings in in, in when i was in opw i worked in ars and i worked in the four courts um ivy house emo court and leash and I don't know if I have a favourite, but I, I, I am a fan of the high Victorian decorative. I love, and my, I always get made fun of my friends, I love patterns, I love the richness of it. So it would rate very highly. And we're hoping that um, coming down the line through the National Development Plan, there will be funding coming our way in order to make the building more accessible. 
and to do some kind of more or, or kind of fabric repair works to the building. And of course, even though it is free entry into this museum and indeed all museums, uh, there's nothing stopping anybody leaving a donation downstairs in the box. Absolutely. Yeah. And of course, then if people don't visit or they're, they're not visiting yet or can't get here, uh, you have your shop is online. Our shop is online. And that was one of the projects that we took on while we were closed. We have a great retail team. While unfortunately they couldn't work in the, and the shops were closed, we set up an online shop. So, so what that kind is, of things can people buy here? There's some beautiful Irish crafts the shop is very nicely curated so there's a lot of there's jewellery and there's a lot of uh, very good books Irish craft so it's lovely and where would people find that now? our website is www.museum.ie and you can link through to the shop from that website Aoife Hurley, Head of Operations at the National Museum of Ireland here in Cardiff Street. It has been a fascinating trip and an unusual way to look at one of Ireland's beautiful buildings. Thank you so much for showing me around today. You're more today. than welcome. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> huge thank you there to Aoife Hurley and all the staff at the National Museum of Ireland here in Dublin for bringing us on an amazing tour of one of Ireland's most beautiful buildings. Now they currently have several amazing exhibitions on including one on Glenda Lock and one on the Vikings and you can't afford to miss it. Go along, support the museum and remember it is free. It's a fabulous day out. <laughs>